hey everyone so in this video we are going to look at adding a sound i had mentioned talking about possibly continuing with the scoring but that's really a ui function at that point we added the scoring functionality and that the displaying of the score is really a ui function so we'll kind of wrap that up more towards the end in this one we're going to add sound now for a sound to play you basically need two different things you need an audio source component which we'll get into a second but when you click on an object we said that there are different components well there's one called an audio source and then the second thing you have to do you have to create references just as we created references to these other objects you have to create references to audio clips and that the audio source can play different audio clips so I just wanted to give you a little bit heads up about that because the functionality is a little bit odd that it's not just you've got this component and you're good to go. If you want to play multiple sounds, you really have to understand the difference between a source and a clip. So let's get into it. What we're going to do first, we're going to select our tiles and we're going to add the audio source. So add component, audio, audio source. And we get rid of plan awake because if you leave plan awake, it does just that. As soon as the object is instantiated, it plays. So as soon as the board appears, every single tile would play. We don't want that to happen. So that gives us our audio source for the tiles. Now you could say, well, wait a minute. Why aren't you adding the audio to Qbert? Qbert's making the change, isn't he? From a gameplay point of view, that's what the player would see. But don't forget, from a coding point of view, it's not Qbert that's changing the color of the tile. It's actually the tile itself. The tile is detecting a collision with Qbert, and the tile is making the change. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the playing of the video, the excuse me, the audio clips right in here. So we already check for when the tile should change color, and we'll put the audio clip there. The second thing that we're going to do, we're going to have a separate sound for when the the tile does not change. So we'll have one sound from when the one sound when the tile does change, one sound when the tile does not change. And I might have pointed it out in the last video. If not, you can see there's a few audio files here. All I did was go to the asset store and I downloaded retro sound pack and i believe the publisher is mululu to give credit where credit is due they're the ones who made the sounds anyways so we've uh, we have attached an audio source component to the tiles now we need those tiles to be able to play the sounds so what we do we go to the tile script and we're going to make a reference to that audio source so public audio source and we'll call this tile sounds as I mentioned I like to append a few letters to the end of certain references so I know what type of object object this is so we'll be using SNDS because that's an audio source and then SND for the individual clips so public audio clip and we'll call this change color snd public audio clip no color change s and d and then if you need more and more sounds you can just keep putting them here like maybe you want a separate sound for when nerd reverts the color but once you see two or three of these it's just rinse and repeat at that point okay so let's go back to our objects okay so what we need to do we need the tile sounds is looking for an audio source. So what we need to do is we need to drag the audio source to there. Selecting all of them may not create the option. It might not create the effect we want to. You can try it. I'm just going to play it safe. I'm going to drag the individual audio sources to the individual references on them. So it'll take a few extra seconds, but I just want to make sure 
that we get the effect that we want. So again, this is just making a reference to the component. It might seem redundant. Sometimes, sometimes Unity is like that where it seems like you have to do something kind of redundant to make it work, but And as I mentioned at the very first video, you could actually do, you know, a couple hours making the just one tile and do everything to it. Give it its colliders, give it its code, give it its sounds, its color changes, and then you make the board. And from a design point of view, that would be very efficient. But from a teaching point of view, I think that would be very challenging for people to see, you know, literally a couple hours trying to explain why you're doing all these things to this one tile. So it creates a little bit more busy work at the end, but I think it keeps people interested seeing the game fold out and develop much quicker. It's not like it takes up that much time. It's only 28 tiles. And it does matter if each object has its own sounds because now, in this particular example, it doesn't really because they're all going to play the same sounds. But think about a game where maybe you have different types of surfaces. You have grass, you have rock, you have uh, metal, wood, okay? So when your character walks over it or if something drops on it, depending on the type of surface, it should make a different sound. So... In this case, it could just you could call it, say, sound one and sound two or whatever, a collision sound, and then each one would get the appropriate corresponding sound. So if it's wood, it would be some kind of wood clatter, metal, metal clanging, that kind of thing. If nothing else, seeing this, it reminds you that this step needs to be done because I think that this is an easy step to forget because, again, it seems redundant. It's like we have an audio source component. Why do we have to make a reference to it? But that's the way it works. Like I said, the main thing I was concerned about, I didn't want one object trying to refer out to another object's audio source. So that was the main concern I had. But again, if you want to try it, that's fine. So now what we need to do, we now need to assign the audio clips. Now that we can do as a group because the clips are coming from down here. So we're going to select them all. And we said tile change will be for change sound and no tile change will be for no change sound okay back to our script so now those have been populated so now what we need to do we already have this section which checks for whether or not the color should be changing we just have to make the right sound clip, the right audio clip, be associated with the audio source. And a brief splice there, I needed to change the settings on my video and audio capture. I normally don't capture system audio, that way I can listen to music in the background and it doesn't get recorded. But obviously if I need to demonstrate the sounds are working, then I do need to capture system audio. So if my voice sounds any different, any fainter, that's why. Okay, so we said that in the tile conscript, this is where we're detecting whether or not a tile needs to change color. This is where we say the tile does need to change color, and therefore this is where we need to change the sound. So first we have to refer back to our audio source, which is tile sounds. And then we're saying that we're going to change the clip that's associated with that sound, with that source, excuse me. And then that is one of these. So here we said that we want it to be 
change color sound, and then we just play it. Oops. And then what we can do is, for now we can just do an else that says, okay, if it's not equal to zero, actually, we can do less than zero for now. We, we might, let's just do an else. I, I don't want to make this too complicated because at the moment I just want to focus on the plane and the sound. So here's the thing, right now this is saying if this is not zero, then go ahead and play the sound of it not changing. However, like I said, in later versions of, of Qbert, when you get to higher levels, okay, you need to change multiple times. So this will eventually have to check only for when it's gone below zero. And then it's very similar. Again, like I say, rinse and repeat. This time it we said it was no color change sound. So no color change sound and play. So again, you're assigning a sound, excuse me, a clip. I, I want to make sure I'm using the correct terminology. You're assigning an audio clip to the audio source because this is the audio source. Okay. So we're saying assign this sound, this clip under these conditions and then play it. Under these other conditions, assign this. And again, this is only happening if Qbert has collided. So it's completely ignoring these sounds won't play if it's any other character. So like I said, you can build on this so it checks to see if Nerd is landing on it and then um, changing that. Actually, my apologies, we already did that. We already had Nerd uh, be checking to see if Nerd landed. So what we do is in this section, you could play the other sound of it like reverting. Okay. So I think if I haven't forgotten anything that should do it, we assigned the audio source to all the objects. We assigned the clips, and then we change the clip based on whether or not the color needs to change. I think that should just about do it. And actually what I'm gonna do just to keep things from being confusing, I am going to reduce the spawn of the nerd and the blob. It doesn't matter what number, I'm just trying to make it a large number. And the reason why we heard that the non-change beep is you have to remember he lands at the beginning. So like I said, one of the last things you can do is put in some controls that very specifically address the first landing, that kind of thing. So like you could put like a slight delay so as that um, no sounds play for like half a second after the board has instantiated or something like that. There's controls you can put in place. Like I said, uh, the, the last video or the last couple videos of this series will basically be the any um, outstanding request. So anything that gets requested that I haven't added. But at this point, basically everything is in place that needs to be. So as far as sound, so if he lands on a tile that needs to be changed the color one sound plays if it doesn't need to be changed a different sound plays and what we could now do we could also do a sound for him falling off that's a little bit more challenging because the collision is down here and usually as soon as he jumps off the board is when the sound plays so there's a few things you can do. You can add like another collider. So like if we rotate around here, we could add a, another collider 
under the board here to check for when he's falling. But if you want, just so you understand how it works, we can just have the sound effect play when he lands on the safety net object. And sorry, another quick splice there. So what we'll do, we click on Qbert, and what we'll do is we'll add an audio source to him. We will use the fall sound file, in this case an audio clip, and we'll actually manually assign it here. We didn't do that last time. We used code to assign it, and the reason for that is because we had multiple clips for a single object. Right now, we have just one sound effect. Might change it in a later one if we give Cuba other sounds, but in this case, we will just give him one assignment, one clip assignment. So what we do, we will, for Qbert, some of this will look familiar since we just did this, so public audio source, and we'll call this fall SND, actually SNDS since it's the audio source. And again, we don't have to do individual clips because there's only one sound that's ever going to be played, at least at this time. So we go back to Unity. We go back. So Qbert selected. And again, we take the audio source and assign it to the audio source. And then we just need to play. And we already have the section where Qbert is colliding with the net. And so we can just And we can, we said it was fall sounds dot play. Did I shut off the, I did not shut off play and awake. Okay, so sorry for a little bit of jumping around there, but again, we basically just did what we did a few minutes ago again, although simpler actually, because we didn't need the individual audio clips since we only have one. So what this should do, is when Kubert collides with the net, you should now hear that sound effect play. It's not perfect because he, the sound should really play as soon as he starts to fall off the board, but you'd have to either add colliders or check for, you know, if his velocity has increased. There's several ways to do it, but the idea is just the basics, the broad strokes of showing how to as assign sounds to certain actions. And let's just have him jump off. And sure enough, when he went back there, it did play. So like I said, you could do other things right now. It's specifically that sound, that audio clip is playing when he collides with the net. You could maybe put another collider higher up. So is that when he collides with that one, you could also use the tag net. Um, then it would play sooner. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Sounds can be a little bit confusing because you have to differentiate between the audio source. And as you can see, if you look at the component, it's basically determining how a clip will be played versus the actual clip, the actual sound wave. Okay, so that should do it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a good day. If there's any features you want to see, please leave a comment. We're getting really close to the end here, I think. So we need to do a title screen. We need to do the scoring that I mentioned in the last video. And then that would just be about it. At that point, it will be if there's just any outstanding requests. So I uh, hope this was helpful and, ho helpful, and I hope you have a good day.